Hey guys, Aaron Schober and Josh Lucas here with uh, another video on the Shield How. Uh, we could have made one long video, but I decided to stretch it into two weeks because the Shield How is one of my favorite techniques. Uh, so I want to spend more time with it. Uh, and if I like to spend more time with it, then you guys do too. So uh, Shield How, we're doing long and short today. So the Shield How works if someone's fighting against you really long, as in long point, and it also works if they're fighting very short against you. So it's a very versatile technique. So the, the first thing we're going to do is if Josh is trying to keep me at distance with long point. All right, so either he's, you know, possibly got here through thrusting, but he, you know, he's more likely just trying to keep me at bay. There's a couple different things I can do. And this is, might be another reason it's called the squinting strike, because I'm going to try to mislead him with my gaze, try to th throw him off, all right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to squint to the point and then I'm gonna take his neck. I'm not gonna look at his neck because then he might, he might be able to tell what I'm doing. So I'm gonna to look to his point. I'm trying to convince him that I'm gonna to try to just beat his sword away like this, all right? But what I'm actually going to do is I'm looking at his point, but I'm actually gonna come in on top of his sword and set up a thrust to the throat. Obviously, this is a cut. I am cutting against the sword, but because he's at such distance, the cut doesn't reach him. It sets up the thrust, which can reach him. Another thing from here is that if he's expecting me to try to cut away his point, he may pull his sword back. Yeah, he may do a little Dirk Vexon. He may pull up, uh, shorten his point a little bit, which if I was just going to cut against his point, that would free him up. Ooh. <laughs> I want you to pull your sword away. Like, uh, I, I thought so, but I wasn't sure. Cause... That's all right. <laughs> now, with, with him in long point, if, I, if I've really convinced him that I'm going to cut against his point here, he may just try to pull up to try to set up a thrust to the other side. So what, this is actually going to break that, because as I'm faking the cut here, I'm cutting over top of his sword. And, and thrusting against his neck. So even if he moves up, I'm still collecting the sword in the same way. So if he stands there like a moron, I'm still gonna get him. If he moves to defend what he's thinking is a cut against his point, I'm still gonna get him. The other way I can do this from long point, once again, he's in long point, is I am going to feint a cut to his head and then hit him in the hands. So I'm gonna look at his head, like I am, I'm trying to beam into him, I am going to hit you in the head. And then I'm going to cut the shield how down onto his hands. If he just stands there, you know, I can cut directly onto his hands. But what he's likely is going to be moving at this point. So I'm looking at his head. He thinks I'm just going to try to step past his point to cut him in the head. He's probably going to wind up, get his hands up to defend a kid. You know, if I've convinced him, he's expecting this. So he's going to get his sword up to block that. What I do instead is I come in with a shield how and cut him in the hands. This is very similar to the, uh, the strategy we use to use our cream power. You're attacking the hands at this point. So in this case, because I cut down uh, with my short edge from a slightly different direction than he was expecting, I bypass his hilt entirely and cut him in the hands. I, could, I may also be able to cut over and down onto it as well. So even if he had his hilt horizontal at this point, I could still come over top and hit him in the hands, much like a Krumpau, but from the other side. So that is how we beat the long point. The shield how is actually really good against someone who's fighting short from you as well. So what do we mean by short? If Josh is in one of his hangers, if he's in plow, if he's an ox, he's fighting short, his sword is pulled back. If, if he's fighting very defensively, he's not cutting to the body, he's cutting to the sword. If he's winding, all of this is fighting short. And so I can actually use, a Dirk, use the shield how to set up a Dirk Vexel to get on the other side of his sword. Okay. That's right. You may have thought that the Dirk Vexel was a bad idea from last week's video, but no. It has its, its time and place, and this is it. <laughs> if, if he's fighting short, so if, and, and I really want to try to figure this out early on in the fight. So this is kind of getting into strategy, but it, it mentions it in the treatise too. I want to see if, he's, if his tendency is to fight short. You know, there's different ways you can go about doing that, but if I have the impression that he's going to be doing this, you know, this type of thing, I'm not going to come in and attack 
right to him because he's trying to set up a counter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a shield how to get on the other side of his sword. There's different ways I could do this. I may, I may pull short myself. I may dip my point under in the shield how, or I may just cut the shield how without taking a step. Uh, it does say in Durbringer you want to do the shield how with a step with the right foot, but it may be in this case, if he's, if he's just setting up the block, I may cut without a step and then step in with the other one. So feel free to experiment. But the main thing is I'm getting around his sword and then thrusting on the other side. So I'm coming in here and then I'm going to thrust on the other side of his sword. With a shield how I'm cutting with my short edge, as I set up the thrust, I'm going to wind out again to bind on the other side of his sword. Uh, that will keep me a little bit safer than if I just thrust straight at him here with his sword on the other side. Right, because he could come up with a revenge strike as he's dying and everything. So when you're fencing short on someone, this is a good way to, uh, if you're fighting very defensively, but it's also a good way to just mess somebody up. If I'm attacking Josh and I'm going to cut at him, when, of course my arms are going to be extended. I'm going to be reaching out to him. And of course he's going to block that. He's going to come over and block that with something. In which case, I'm fencing long at this point and he's fencing short. What's cool about this, the reason this works is because if, I'm, if I somehow know that he's gonna fence short, if I fence short as well, he might not be able to tell. The sword's coming right at him. It's very difficult to tell if someone has their arms extended or not. Um, you, you can with practice, but it's hard. So as he's expecting a large cut to his body, I pull my sword short, and that's what's going to allow me to come in with a thrust either against his body or against his face. 